Integration patterns, options for achieving near real-time notifications to external systems. Hello, welcome to another session of Steve Tech Arc. Today, we're gonna to be talking about integration patterns. And in this pattern, we're gonna be looking at the following situation. There is a change in Salesforce. Let's call it a record update, record change. And you want that notification to make it to an external system in near real time. And what I mean by that is not synchronous, so it's not real time with a request reply, it's near real time where the re it could take sub second or up to a few seconds or worst case, maybe a minute for it to be notified. So we're looking at change, a record change in Salesforce. What choices do you have for mechanisms to get that to a third party system. And we're gonna walk through the choices you have available. So first, we're gonna start with the following. We're gonna start with you're in Salesforce and there's a record change and you're gonna do a record trigger flow. So this can be config and you're gonna use the outbound message. So you're gonna be using um, a, a mechanism that's been around for a long time in Salesforce and it's just gonna take a record trigger flow, you create an outbound message, goes into the outbound message queue, and then, and we can go over the details of an outbound message in a subsequent session, Salesforce outbound message mechanism pushes it to an outbound message listener that you implement. It implements the SOAP web service. And then the listener, which you implement, then sends that data on to the external system. This requires config only. So you just set up the record trigger flow and set up the outbound message. It sends fields on the primary object of the flow. And then if you need to, you can always have a callback mechanism from the outbound message. So this is your first option, all config. Now a second mechanism, this is a more um, you know modern mechanism you could do is have your record change with your record trigger flow, and then you publish a platform event on the event bus. So this is very straightforward, very fast within Salesforce, just record trigger flow, publish the, the, to the event bus, and then the external system, this is different. Instead of having the external system implement a SOAP web service, in this situation, the external system subscribes to the event. And we've talked about the relay state and replay ID, um, the replay ID of you know all messages and back to the retention window or just new messages only or messages up to a date in a different session. So this is your more, uh, let's call it modern technology stack choice. That is of all config, record change, record trigger flow, publishing the event onto the event bus, and then having the external system, but this is the key, is the external system needs to be able to subscribe to the Salesforce platform event bus. Now, you could follow along in that pattern, but be using Apex. So you could have a record change, have an Apex trigger, and then the Apex trigger could be writing a platform event on the event bus. Very straightforward, minimal amount of code. And then an external system, again, has to subscribe to the event and pick it up. So this is a straightforward mechanism using platform events. Now you may choose to purchase and implement Salesforce Change Data Capture, CDC. And in this case, there's a record change, CDC records it, and CDC writes the events to the event bus and you could have the external system subscribe to the event to that particular event. It's a different event than your custom event. It's a CDC data change event. And you can either have them subscribe directly or you can create what are called custom channels. And we could be talking about that in a subsequent session. So Salesforce, you don't need to write any code. You just need to implement CDC and potentially do your configuration on your custom channels. And that is using change data capture. 
Now we're gonna use the following pattern. The external system has an exposed web service. So they're not able to call in and subscribe to a platform event, but they've exposed an endpoint web service. And there are three different choices you could do using a flow. So you're back to your record trigger flow. It's a new op. You used to be able to just do external services where you define the YAML, the API spec for the services, and then you could have a record trigger flow called the external services, which will hit the exposed web service. You now can do HTTP callout actions from record trigger flows, and this will allow you from a record trigger flow, get you callout action, and for the extra exposed web services. Know, that, of course, that this will probably run in a separate context. And then let's take a quick look back. This, going back to Apex, this Apex trigger um, will can run in the same context. But right here, so we have HTTP callout, external services. Now you could also have an Apex callout in what's called invocable Apex. That's where you wrapper the callout and have the record trigger flow called the invocable Apex. So each of these has uh, different nuances, but these are your choices. Record, change, record triggered flow, and then have it call an HTTP callout, external services, or an invocable Apex callout. Let's go take a look at the next option. So this could just be using a straightforward Apex callout. So what I could have is a record change, Apex trigger, making the Apex call out. Now what you can now do is you can hit the rest or even go for the older SOAP calls. Now there are key nuances that the Apex trigger can't make the context directly, that the Apex call out needs to be done in an at future or an async, you know, asynchronous call. But, though, but the key nuance is you have your record change, your Apex trigger, which leads to your Apex callout, which goes to the web services. So these are choices you have available. You need to be looking at the third party system you're talking to. How um, active is it? Is if it just exposes a REST endpoint, then you might have to make callouts. If you have middleware like MuleSoft, then MuleSoft can act as any of these actors and be doing the platform event subscriptions could be exposing API endpoints. So if you have a middleware, it can take any of these choices. And you also want to look at what's your skill set and your intellectual property, and where do you want your logic stored? Is it going to be in a flow on your side? Is it going to be in Apex? Or are you going to go, let's say, with CDC and just have it even less complications? Um, so you need to look at your skill sets and where you want your logic. You need to look at the endpoint and what are its capabilities and see if you have anything in the middle. And there, make your choices as to which of these options is best. Code has more complexity, but it can handle more end use cases. The um, config can be simpler, but it may not handle some of the complexities, complicated mapping, intricate steps. So these are some choices you can look at. Um, when you're making it, looking at your patterns. Hope you enjoyed Nifty Notifications. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to YouTube, Steve TechArc, and www.stevetechark.com, and like and subscribe. Thank you very much.